Hello, my name is Tom Cardell. Um, it's Wednesday, it's the 18th of December 2013. Um, I just want to make a quick video. I've come across some amazing information about, uh, well, thanks to Brian Gerrish trying to cover it up. Somebody, somebody, um, somebody told me about it because they saw me doing a video slagging Brian Gerrish off. So there you go, Brian. That, that, that's a bit of an on goal there. Basically, Brian Gerrish got this guy on his show. And instead of showing all the good information, like the juicy information, the horrific, um, very, very obviously horrible, suicide-inducing um, drama pieces and, you know, imagery that was being pushed at young children in Bridge End at the same time of the suicides and after, where they were actually um, <laughs> getting government-sponsored organisations such as Mind. And um, the Mind is the one that the doctor sends you to if you've got... Uh, or they give you pamphlets from if you've got like um, stress or depression or something. And the other one that they had was a, uh, so you'll have all seen it. it's got a sign and it's like scribble and then it like goes into a M, mind, like that and it's got a mind ring like a piece of string that's all screwed up. Um, and that's not particularly, I mean I suppose it could just be like a screwed up mind but then why would it be a screwed up mind if you're going to the doctor to sort it out? It's like, it's like the negative isn't it? It's like having a picture of a dead person in the doctor's search or somebody with a neg leg snapped you know, for a physical injury, it doesn't, it's not quite right. But anyway, the thing is, Ryan Gerrish has been, um, had, had basically covered this story up. So what he'd done is he got the guy on, he put him in the middle of this incredibly boring, incredibly boring show, which he now does. Now I've done another video on Ryan Gerrish, how he used to be extremely riveting and inflammatory, and now he's incredibly boring right now, and he took some monotone voice like this, and that then slows your brain down. And you probably might, if you were like, lying down, you might go to sleep, or your brain will slow down, so you're not fast thinking like this, and then that links to that, and then that links to that. It's monotone, it's the exact opposite of his um, transatlantic, um, you know, opposite number Alex Jones does, where he gets really excited and he gets shouting, and you're like, well, I never does that, any of that anymore, and he never really did, but he used to come out of informa information very interesting. Point is, this guy said, I couldn't believe it, he got me on, he'd been briefed, he had these horrific pictures that have been taken from these, uh, plays that they were sent, selling, had children in these plays watching them who were like as old as five in areas which had been blighted by massive suicides and there'd been a reporting ban and the police were telling people they're not allowed to talk about it because it's uh, going to encourage more copycats, yet they're sending them to watch suicide plays. Now, so Brian didn't go for the smoking gun stuff. He went for the, um, and there's more smoking gun stuff, by the way, to back up. These people weren't just incredibly naive or just one bad apple. There's a lot more to it. Basically, right? As soon as Brian put this show out, though, right, so it's completely watered down. Right now, I'll show you one of the image, images, tell you one of the images he put up. He put up an image of a little boy, which he, I think I've actually seen done in another video. And it was a little boy who's kind of sitting, standing in a village context. And I think he's got, like, something in the background. And he's scra scratched out his face. So he's got a pencil or something. I forget how it is. But basically, his face isn't there, right? He's, it's a little picture of a little boy. And his face is kind of on the picture of white, like so it's being scribbled out. And the thing is, then this po this has been a poster in this village that this guy lived in. And he thought, it's a bit strange, this poster. What, what's this doing next to a children's playground? This is a creepy poster put there by creepy, creepy, horrible subversives. I know what it is. It definitely is. Then a few days later, we saw the same poster again somewhere else in the village. You know, it's not a big village. It doesn't have hundreds of thousands of people in it like a lot of the villages, you know, nowadays. It's just a normal little village with maybe thousands of plus people in it. And... He saw the same picture again. He goes, oh, yeah, that's different. The, the little kid on this poster somewhere else had, um, he had like, um, it looked like he'd wet himself, but he still had his face scribbled out. And I don't know if it was on that poster or another poster he saw another day, but there was a little, a little dot on the, that where the little kid's face used to be, only small. And it was actually a little fly. Now, this made him think something else. So he's just thought nasty, subversive, horrible thing to scare and worry children and make them feel weird. Then he's seen um, the black fly, which is obviously, if you know anything about it, and you look it up, put nudge in, like nudge as in nudging somebody. There's this thing called nudge theory, which is where you can use very, very small psychological tools to kind of confuse people and use this to put them off and change their thinking. And the, the example that was first brought out to that everybody would approve of, or, you know, until you sort of realise that it's a next step into more creepy stuff, is they started sticking black flies in urinals in England, in pubs and clubs, and people were pissing at the fly, and they weren't pissing all over the um, all over the floor. 
So it was getting them to piss at a target without actually saying, please don't piss everywhere. It's sort of the opposite. You get them in another way. And there's actually quite a few things you can actually watch on the internet where you get these horrible, creepy, um, I think they're normally Oxford graduates, you know, who think they're better than everybody else and they're, you know, that they're there to sort of control the populace and the populace are stupid. The populace are stupid. But the whole point is, you know, they're posing as there to be trying to help them rather than say, sort yourself out and you can reach this load of cunts. Like, they're, they're, they're not saying that. They're saying, oh no, we're helping them. And of course, you know very well these people know they're not helping them. They know they're just treating them like um, complete idiots and they're taking advantage of their, um, you know, imbecilic nature, which is very, very creepy. But of course, they will say, well, they're never going to look it up and they won't look it up. So maybe they got a point. But anyway, you can see quite a lot of these horrible little creeps doing these talks about um, nudging and nudge theory and how brilliant it is, how they can basically, they, they use different language, obviously they use jargon, but that, um, and they think they can hide under that, but they can basically make complete fools out of everybody and just completely manipulate them and they'll actually brag about it and people watch it and think it's great and they think it's great that they're being helped by this brilliant new science. And these like young sort of lads who aren't wearing like sort of suits and stuff, they're wearing kind of like trainers and scruffy clothes, um, are helping them because that's not how creepy conservative politicians dress, for instance. Now, anyway, right, so you've got this guy, went to Brian Gerrish, put this thing on his show. Fair play to Brian. Now, this is the thing, Brian did put it on his show. I think he might have done two shows then, but he put it in the middle of a very, very boring show. Now, as I've said in the past, Brian used to do very interesting, fast-paced shows, which were very punchy, 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 punchy. Interesting stuff. Not a particularly interesting oratory style, but, you know, he covered all the bases. I don't even know if he read it off a sheet, but either way, he covered all the bases, you know, so you can't criticise him for that. And he had lots of interesting subjects. He linked them together well. It was very, um, they came across in a very good format, if you ask me. Now, this is the thing. So then he's he's retracted that. Once he got this trust base where people used to trust him, he's changed it now. And what he's now doing is he's doing it very boringly. Right now, this, if you look at it in a very sinister manner, manner which I which I will which we'll jump into now without wanting to digress too far. This is the exact same way that some creepy little um, Marxist subversive would describe their behaviours. They describe it in jargon in the middle of a massive, great big paper that they just bang up on the internet in jargon. So unless you knew what the actual um, what the actual uh, buzzwords were, you wouldn't be able to find you wouldn't be able to find the fact that they're bragging about tricking people into like depopulation programs without knowing or something mad like that. They wouldn't they would never ever find it, and they would use all these different words, which basically mean mass murder or eugenics. But people say because people wouldn't have known what eugenics was when eugenics was out, they thought that sounds like a nice word. Um, it must be good, but of course, <laughs> it's not good for them, because if they don't know what eugenics means, they're definitely for the chop, right? So, Brian, though, put this, put, put, started putting people on his show, right? And he puts them in these really boring um, talks, and they're so boring that no one's actually ever going to listen to them. He knows very well people aren't going to listen to them. And you've got to realise that that's all planned, because he knows what he's doing, and he's effectively acting like a horrible little subversive... Um, communist change agent as they call themselves that's what they call themselves and you know communitarian organization and disruption theories and uh destruction and chaos and all these different words that they use and people seem to think it's all right when they use them they find it a bit confusing but they just think it goes over their head so they better not condemn them but anyway this is what happened so he went on and thought hang on a minute so he showed the picture of the little boy he put me on his show but considering he's never again and in Bridgend has been this massive suicide epidemic, and they've all been hanging themselves, and Brian did cover the fact that even girls were hanging themselves, which is rare. He didn't then follow that up with these pictures of these people, all, I think, women, all hanging, mainly women, hanging in these theatrical productions, where they had them up on wires, but then they also had nooses around the neck, hanging themselves. Like, it wasn't just hanging like by their arm, it was hanging by the neck on nooses, and they were supported by false wires, yeah? And they had all these kind of, some of them had like fancy dresses on, all sorts of stuff like this. And it was like, um, it was sort of trying to glorify hanging quite clearly, but it was also very sinister. They, it was it was there to, to, you know, to destroy people's thinking and sort of make them feel very disturbed. Now, I don't know if you know, but when, when you're a little kid, if you see something that's not very nice, sometimes it can disturb you forever. And often it can actually like 
overtly disturb the little kid for days or weeks or months, like they won't want to sleep in their room when they didn't mind before, they won't want to go in the dark, all these things can happen. It can really cause them lots of problems. Now, if that's just scaring them by telling them there's goblins in the woods or something, then that's possibly not very nice or whatever. I don't, I'm not going to get into it now. But the point is that if you show them pictures of them hanging themselves, right, that's clearly, it's targeted because they can actually, hang, they could, well, they could possibly be in the old, they could hang, hang themselves. The other thing is that it's also been proved that if you, um, in, in America, right, this thing, in England you don't have it, and they will be, they're trying to bring it in, it out. But, and it'll be the same crowd trying to do it. But the point is that in America, they've got religious education, sex education, and death ed, or death education. Right now, Charlotte Isabe is a very um, well-respected author. She used to be the, I think she was like the Secretary for Education whilst Ronald Reagan was in, Ron, Ronald Reagan, the president, was in um, for a long time. Uh, she said her dad was in Skull and Bones. So she's a very establishment figure. And she had a very, very top government job. And she wrote an excellent book called The Dumbing Down of America. Now, in that, she talks about communi- c- communitarianism. She talks about the fact that they have plans with the communists. And when I say they, I mean Britain and America have, have plans with the communists and now the Chinese to make sure that their education systems are compatible, which nobody knows about, but they do have. And that she's got the paperwork in a book. Her book is called The Dumbing Down of America. And you can contact her, or you can contact the website. It's a very good, it's a very, very good book. It's just massively full of information. Though this is the point, it's actually quite boring. Because if you listen to her talks, she talks about this stuff. But when you read a book, it's just like droves and droves of what actual government documents backing up everything she says. So it's, it's, it, you know, it's just like an absolute staggering body of work. But you know, it's, it's, it's quite, really quite something. Anyway, so she talks about communitarianism, all this stuff. All of these nasty communist diversion tactics and what their whole blames are. Also, Charlotte, if you if you if you rewind to what I was just saying, I said um, sex education, death education, and religious education. Starting with religious, sorry, I went the wrong way around. Point is that religious education, she said, and the other ones, they all have to have education on the end of them because they've got no business being taught in schools. You don't get taught maths education, English education, science education, history education, or politics education. You just get taught the subject. So you see, that's a bit of a give or giveaway if you look at it that way, that they're not really subjects or they're not really subjects that you could really conceive, conceive teaching in the school. So you have to actually sort of give them an extra bit of a nudge, if you, if you like to use the term, to make people think they must be educational because it said educational, whereas it's not it's not necessary with real academic sub- subjects. Now, I don't know really how that works, but it, it does appear to ring very true. Now, with, with things like... Um, sex education, she can prove from documents in her book, so never mind what people say since then um, about it. It's been proven, um, and there's a lot that the people didn't just accidentally start teaching children sex education and then they started having lots of problems with them to do with sex and pregnancy and stuff. Uh, Definitely increasing it and they had sexually transmitted diseases and all that stuff. This wasn't something she came up with and she just pointed it out or people realised after they brought it in and maybe they were too embarrassed to roll them back. They knew beforehand what it would do and the people involved with bringing these policies in were evil um, subversives who like hate everything and um, you know want to sort of roll the world back to a sort of like backwards dystopia. Basically, if you look into their backgrounds, they're all trained in these horrible tactics of subversion uh, and, you know, how you, like, make people feel uneasy to control them. Now, this is a very well-documented book. Um, you've also got evidence that if you teach children about things like homosexuality and stuff in a kind of very, like, um, nuts and bolts type physical way, especially, um, you know, you get, get too much into details, that will, that will confuse them. And that's actually also been proved to promote suicides. Obviously, it promotes gays, but um, obviously, if you haven't worked out that they're massively trying to promote like, homosexuality and all sorts of other perversion absolutely everywhere, then you know you, you, you're not really living on the same planet that um, most of the rest of the people who are paying attention are. Uh, because even if you know, like I mean, the amount the amounts short, sharply going up, it's clear it's clearly absolutely everything's geared to it. Um, the other thing is though. That if you've got um, if you if you've got religious education, the reason that's really wrong is because 
you're teaching the children about stuff that's none of the school's business. It's something that should be taught at home. I mean, I suppose it's a bit different in American context because in England you get different denominational religious schools and stuff like that. But you do get that in America probably, don't you? But I don't know anyway. It's just not really any of the school's business. But then neither is sex education. Neither is teaching little children about gays. And definitely teaching children about suicide just just for no reason is not is not something that what pick children people don't send their children to school for the reason that the state provides school. I get that. I've always got that. But the whole point is they're not. They're definitely going to catch on if you start teaching them about killing themselves. Because that's just not got anything to do with like things that any any sound minded thinking person would ever like agree to have put in the national curriculum. Right, so anyway, I know I've digressed, but this is the point. You've got to get the fact that these tactics um, and their agendas, right? I don't know what the big agenda is, but, you know, depopulation is one. Promotion of homosexuality and perversion. Breakdown of the family. All these things, they're all um, things that you do to a society when you want to break it down. And they are marked as subversive te techniques. And they're all catalogued in um, documents going back, you know, centuries. So... They're not, they're not a new thing, and when people seem to be doing something that has a horrible desired outcome, sorry, that a horrible outcome, that doesn't mean that it must be an accident. It can mean that that was the exact outcome they were going for. Now, if you don't think that's true, then you know you need to look at the fact that that is the whole point of communism. You, you usurp things, you cause a revolution, you keep having revolutions, you, you wipe out all the people who help you make the revolution and you just continue to have revolutions. Revolution doesn't mean it just goes round and round and round and round and round. You just sit on the top spinning the wheel round and the genocide goes and people get killed left, right and centre. And everyone thinks that at some stage it's going to get better and it's just a load of accidents. And like obviously if you've been in a communist regime and the communists get beaten back for a little while, the fact they're all swinging from every single lamppost it will tell you that um People who have been victimised don't 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 share your thoughts. So again, it comes back to this idea that people who went to Oxford University can tell everybody that ah, um, oh, it's all a great laugh. We're really nice, and we're going to decide everything for you, and we're going to use all these words you don't understand and make it out. It's a all big joke, and you know you will just go along with it. Right. So <clears throat> I've linked two things there. You've got communist subversion. Marxist subversion techniques, sorry, yeah. You've got evil agendas behind these things, which have been put in place years and years and years ago. They're not, they're not something new. And they're not, a, you know, they're not a new novel concept. And they are not disparate to communist subversive techniques. They are the result of successful communist subversive techniques, yeah. You've got a very, very firm body of evidence by, at the height of the, um, the Cold War, you had Ronald, Ronald Reagan in. And his education secretary has written a book all about this. And she's backed it up with massive and massive documents. I'm not saying it's documented. I mean, there are documents in there. The whole thing is just full of documents proving every point she says. These things did not happen by accident. They were planned. Now, we take a step back to Charlotte's book. In Charlotte's book, and in her talks, if you want to watch like an abbreviated version of it, Charlotte is a B, by the way. It's I S. Is L. B, it's, it's spelt in a funny way. I find it difficult to spell. I S B E R Y T T, I think. Anyway, you'll find it. And the dumbing down of America, you'll find it there. Sorry, that's a lot better than <laughs> just trying to spell. I'm not really good at it with certain complicated say words. But anyway, in that book, she talks about community organizations, communitarianism, how people get into groups, take them over, and what they do is they try and agitate a change right so she didn't she basically let's say they want to bring in a new initiative they might take a few years getting it in or they might be battered back at the last second but what they'll do is they'll keep trying so they'll change its name and trying to bring it in you see what i mean and they'll often use upside down language like they'll talk about a community but they won't say community destruction or like um euthanite yeah They'll try and put it in a nice word. Now, if you look back in the old days, you've got words like euthanasia. It doesn't sound like a nasty word, but it's not a good word. And you get like um, eugenics sounds nice. Dysgenics sounded horrible, didn't it? But they were trying to promote dysgenics, eugenics over dysgenics, because dysgenics was a nasty thing, so therefore you have to do eugenics because you have to do one or the other. 
And that would be the same with euthanization. Euthanasia was probably a nasty word that they were saying at one stage, which was the only thing that would have to happen if we didn't do eugenics. Euthanasia, sorry. But anyway, the whole the whole point with this is is that at the time when that that those things were happening, these people, um, change agents as they're termed in communist technique, or disruptors, or um, what are they called, agitators, these people. I mean, if you look up on the internet, change agent, there are people bragging that they're a change agent, right? So they are, in most towns, you live in a town and you know, like Timbuktu, maybe they're not there yet, but they've been around in the West for a long time. You can go on courses to learn how to do it. The thing that Brian bangs on about all the time, Brian Gerrish, is his uh, common purpose. They, they, they have books about it, you know, like where they talk about useful idiots, change agents, all this stuff, and it's all about we're so clever, we're going to change everything, aren't we great? Everyone else is stupid. But of course, the way they'll term it is they'll never actually tell anyone they're stupid, apart from when they're sort of viciously attacking them. But now this is the thing. People think they're viciously attacking them. This is where we get back onto it. So Charlotte Isabelle's covered these people in the book, and she says they're the people who try and bring in these subversive educational policies, not just um, about like turning people into gays and um, you know teaching them about sex when they're too young and um, what you call it, teaching them about... Uh, Killing themselves or religion, all totally inappropriate stuff. They don't. They don't cover that. They don't just cover that kind of stuff. They also cover other things like just the deliberate dullification of the education process. So you find out one policy was working and making the children more clever and thinking better for themselves, and they think, no, 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 <laughs> we'll get rid of that one. We'll start giving them higher marks for like giving stupid answers, and we'll sort of restructure the entire exam system so it's so confusing that no one can really understand what we're doing, and we'll use silly words, and the next thing we know, years later, we'll have people all getting A stars and A pluses, and they'll be <laughs> not be able to hardly read and write, which is obviously, you can see in most countries today, and, you know, kids are all spaced out, and they're not, they're not as clever as what they were, yet lots of them are getting very, very high marks, and it seems to be very, very strange, because, you know, it used to be quite a rarity to get really high marks, so... If you've got old classes of kids all getting high marks, surely um, that test, I don't know, anyway, you know, it's not, it's not the, um, it's not the, it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, right, but moving on. So I'll keep having to go back to it. It's a bit confusing. Moving forward, this guy, so we went in to see Brian Gerrish. He knew Brian Gerrish was trying to subvert his message by making it very boring. And he was putting all these pictures up, and then Brian wasn't showing them. So he wasn't showing the hanging ones, he was showing the ones a little boy. And then the guy was, Brian Gersh, what's going on about the hanging? Because we've gone about hanging in the past. But he wasn't linking it to hanging pictures. He wasn't just going hanging pictures, the ha people, children are hanging themselves, which would have been very, very much easier than going through all the steps that I've come through to this point, because I'd imagine it's about 20 minutes in, or maybe probably even longer. Right now, this guy went home. And I don't know if that's the first talk or the second talk. He, he, he made a bit of a fuss about making sure this got pushed around his village so a lot of people saw it. I don't know how many people saw it, but obviously, you know, when you push around a village, a, a video about um, a thing in the village, then that, that, that the people involved with it who are pushing the subversive agenda would be the people who probably watch it at least once, if not seven times. So possibly help you get a YouTube video to get the hits up on, you know, that type of stuff. A lot of your actual, um, controversy, people trying to hide what you've said, will actually push your internet presence up, because they watch it every day like this, <laughs> and so they'll push it up, and <laughs> they'll completely hang themselves with their own um, malice and sort of getting caught, it's very funny, but anyway, what happened was, these pictures had been taken from plays, which had been pushed in these village, villages, affected by this mass suicide epidemic. The mass suicide epidemic had killed loads of children. We don't know how many. There's been a police ban on talking about it. I don't know if it's a police, well, it's an injunction or whatever. Well, they're just not reporting on it. In the Bridge End area. He was in the Bridge End area. So as I said, Brian did mention a nasty poster near a playground or something. But the point was, in the village halls, they've been organising these horrible plays where there were pictures, you know, like uh, dramatisations of people hanging themselves constantly. And there were different shows with all hanging as the big thing. Now, the guy who's been, um, like, inventing these plays, right, I've, he's, I've got his name written down, but basically, as soon as this thing went out, he killed himself. Now, 
I don't know whether Brian Gerrish covered that, but you think, why didn't he cover it? Why didn't he start running with it? Why didn't he think, we've got a mega story here. I've been completely uh, discredited by all the people who used to know me. You aren't totally stupid and totally brainwashed into just believing everything I say. I've got a massive mega story here. Bridge, Bridge End, the Bridge End suicide epidemic is a world famous event. You know, I wouldn't say everyone in the world would know it, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big, it's a big event. And everyone in England knows about it. And I can sort of basically say, you saw it here first. We've got pictures. The guy has killed himself. The guy who's, you know, who orchestrated this no fit state circus, which was the, um, the production company that did, did, did the, um, did the horrible fate, but he didn't. Now, as a result of this, um, the guy, you know, obviously is convinced that Brian was just messing around, causing, you know, like just, just, just definitely, there's no question, he was just deliberately making his message, a message of a mega story seemed so disinteresting that, you know, it wasn't even worth, um, wasn't even worth, uh, really making any fuss of, and he just wasn't even worth putting the proper pictures of. So, what then happened was, he, he started to talk to other people about this and he started to look into the backgrounds of more of these people and he started finding out that these um, community activist people, they're getting involved with loads of things, like they just get involved with anything. So for instance, some of the people who he would studied, right, had been joining like the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives and the Green Parties in the same village. So they'd be sort of going on to all the meetings. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, you've got to remember these people. Um, when you when you, you consider that their 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 agenda isn't good, you start realizing that you know if they're like self-serving horrible individuals, why would they be doing these things? And then also, because you know if you've known them for a long time, you know this about. Them. And then also, they'll be like getting involved with charity groups, getting along, getting involved with community groups. But he couldn't understand why, because it's just like, well, why would they do that? Because it doesn't make any sense. And the thing that he started to realize was. Is when he started reading up on this strategy, strategy which Brian Gerrish does cover, by the way, but he doesn't really cover how it works. Saul Alinsky's tactics all revolves around people attacking a movement, or they're attacking, people always think of communists attacking a movement. You know, you might attack a character at the head of a movement to ruin the movement. It's not just as simple as that. One of the other things you do is you attack a person just to get some sort of momentum going. So you get this momentum going. Once the momentum's going, other people who sort of think that person's, um, yeah, that person's causing the trouble, they, they want to get involved with it. And the other thing is, to start off with, you don't do it very, what you do is you'll have different people agitating a person. So that then you can actually start in a small village context, you can start a situation where you can get total control of everything. Because what you do is you've got different people who will say, for instance, be agitating the person by doing doing something that they probably wouldn't really object to doing, but the person knows that as it's a sort of course of conduct, you know, like amounting to criminal harassment, if you actually realise it's being orchestrated by the same person, that they realise that they're being picked out for special treatment, like having brass bands starting playing very early in the morning on the Sunday, <laughs> stuff like that, or people just walking right past their window and just hanging about outside the house now, <laughs> breaking sticks, or um, People like smashing their window of their car, um, and people coming up to them and um, asking if they can hire out their field and put 400 tents in it. And they're like, "It's my garden, no." And they're like, "Oh right." Like. <laughs> and then they put it in the field next door to it and have like a great big massive <laughs> wave. <laughs> and then, like you know, say for instance, a year later, someone else will come up to the guy and say, "Oh, we want to come and buy that car off you." And they'll say. Oh, I've been here before. There was a big wave. It was really loud. It went on all weekend. And the person will be like, <laughs> who sent them? <laughs> Why? These people will just be sent to just constantly do their heads in. Or they'll be sent to like do bird watching, like one near their house. <laughs> and they'll just do someone that bird their house like this. <laughs> but, you know, if it's just one incident, it would seem strange. But because of the fact you can feel when somebody's doing something to do your head in, <laughs> To get head in. And of course, you don't know that this is an actual tactic which is written down in the book to do your head in. So it's very bad and it's nasty, but you see, you've got these people start going completely mad. And then what they do 
if they start like less subtle intimidation and sorry, uh, harassment, what will they do is they say, for instance, oh, your house, <laughs> they'll send a thing to the council saying, that guy's house, that's on the common land. He's built it on the common land. What's he playing at? And <laughs> when people realise it's built on the, not built on the common land, a while later, the damage will have been done because that person will have people walking past him going, well, you, you're building your house on the common land. And the council will be complaining to them and they'll have to have court cases. But this person who bought this thing up hasn't had to bring in any evidence. But when you take another step, that you're going to realise that there'll be people involved um, with the council, for instance, who won't say, hang on a minute, what do you mean it's on the common? They'll just jump on it and start like an action to get them to knock the house down. And then a few years later, after that subsided, someone else will say, no, the garage, it's on the common. <laughs> and the whole thing will go on again. And these people will what is going on? Now, they'll start realising people at the council are cooperating, but they won't really understand that it's a massive conspiracy because they'll think, well, what are they trying to get me to sell up? Um, and they're trying to, what, what is it? What are they trying to do? Because they think there's an actual sort of normal, um, sane person's uh, motivation. And they don't understand that it's one of these crazed Marxist subversives who like believes in like massive depopulation, um, disruption and chaos, which is what they believe. And they write in their own little manuals. You see, so you've got these situations happening where you've got communist subversion or Marxist subversion, you've got targeting of every thing in society and trying to like attack it. You've got actual targeting of people to create ructions so that then the momentum and people can get behind the momentum and you can get control of areas and you can start having like just animosity because people don't think of well ones animosity, I don't believe in. Uh, basically, then you've got these people who were like got protection so they can make an accusation They'll be like saying that person's harassed them, saying all sorts of stuff. And that person will just end up like complete nut, looking like a complete nutcase. And then you'll have an actual thing that you can actually work on. And that person will start doing things unusually, or they'll start doing, um, you know, in some instances, it's believed to cause like murders, mass murders even, because these people go completely mad. And the person who pointed out they were mad to start off with will like be completely exonerated by the fact they've gone on a killing spree. Because they'll go, it's mad. You should have, you should, you should have just done what I did straight away and like made them, you know, lock them up for harassing me, even though there was no evidence. That that type of stuff. So it, it's kind of a complicated subject. And the whole point of it is, is that if you've got this, these these multifaceted things all happening at the same time, it's it's virtually impossible for anyone to actually see it coming at them. It will make them very irrational, make them do things they shouldn't do, and um. You know, it's all it's all very, very nasty. Now, so you've got that. That's just happening just to get control of things. Then you've got the other thing, is you've got nasty communist subversives trying to push in horrible agendas. Then you've got the fact that these people go into every organisation. So, for instance, any charity, any anything like that, they'll just get in it just to get in it because it's a good way to network and get movement and appear to be doing the right thing. And then they'll ruin, they'll obviously be using it for their own sordid activities and promoting their own creepy sordid messages. And then what they'll do is they'll get, like on a wider scale, when it's getting reported by someone who's meant to be helping everyone out, like Brian Gerrish, they'll obviously know what's going on because they have been trained the same themselves. And they won't push it in the same manner as they would push a proper, you know, one of their other subjects, they'll just completely sink it and make, you know, like trying to try and just basically make it seem like a very humdrum, boring subject. So even when you've got people committing suicide the day after one of Brian's shows going off, Brian should have been absolutely over the moon. He should have really been capitalising on that. And he, and he didn't. And it's only when you realise what his actual agenda is, or his sort of, you know, his, at least his tactics are, to affect nasty change in the country for whatever particular reason that is, and I don't know what it is, you realise that he obviously is one of these agitators. He is one of these um, Marxist-trained um, subversives. And for whoever he's working for, that is the whole reason that he knew. I don't maybe they phoned him up and said, look, don't, don't, you've got to water that show down. But if they said you've watered that show down, then it went out. And one of their members went and um, topped himself, or got they, or they killed him and made it look like hanging. Then that wouldn't really seem to be the case, would it? So 
I think Brian automatically knew, well, I, I, I pretty much know, he automatically knew what they were doing and he realised it's part of the same agenda or an agenda that he's like doing himself so he doesn't want to have anyone cause him any problems doing his own little, you know, like if you're a burglar in one place, you don't want any burglar in another. You might not be in the same gang of burglars, but if you see another burglar hopping over the fence, you, you know, you would want to kind of like, wouldn't want to start making too much noise out around that side of the house so that the, the people would wake up and see them. It's the same thing. It's complicated. It's difficult to understand. It really is difficult. And Brian's motives are still a confusion to me. But the point is that you have got these change agents. He's exposed change agents in common purpose, but he just hammers it all down to common purpose. You don't need to believe... Common purpose is involved, right? But the whole point is it's not just common purpose. You know, Freemasons will obviously be involved, but it's not... It's, it's these people, they're not... They're doing this to cause these changes. They consider themselves... I don't know why. I think some of them just do it for kind of like a hobby because they're just losers and they're not very pleasant. But the whole point is, it's it's, it's very creepy, and it's all it's all linked together. And you've got to remember that there is a eugenics plot. There is a there is a depopulation agenda. Again, I don't really know what the reason for it is, but there is one. And one of the other things that cropped up when I was looking at this is it turns out that if you look up Parish Hall, this is a little bit of homework for you. This is something to just keep you thinking. If you look up Parish Hall, Doctor and Chairman, yeah, like Dr. Dot Chairman, yeah. You and put it in Google, like so. You got Parish Hall, Doctor Chairman. You'll get loads and loads, or Parish Council, sorry, Parish Council, sorry, Doctor and Chairman. You will get loads and loads of hits, right? And you get loads of Chairmen of Parish Halls, um, and they're doctors, but they're not doctors in like medical doctors, who you think. Chairman of the I don't mean not parish hall. I mean, if you live in towns, you don't really get them. It's more the country, isn't it? But you'd think, well, the, the local um, the, the local GP might be the doctor, but it's not. It's all like um, <laughs> genetically modification scientists, endocrine disrupt disruptor um, experts, and then you start looking at these people's papers, which is another step, and you start seeing that they're all talking about eugenics and like how it, they're depopulating the planet. And they're working for organisations that are funded by um, the Rockefeller Foundation and all this other mad stuff. And so you see, I didn't want to bring that up at the start because, of course, there is a, a big hidden hand involved with this. I wanted to keep it on a micro scale, how you could actually see it happening in an, in an actual environment. Because if you bring too many dimensions, it's too complicated. So if you put in Parish Hall, Parish, Ca what is it, Parish Council Doctor Chairman, yeah, you'll see loads of these in every single town, all around England. They're absolutely everywhere. And it's in other countries as well. And these people are paid up, basically, members of the, uh, whatever the sort of, the eugenic society is going as nowadays. And um, endocrine disruptors, by the way, are things that you can um, put inside people and they start making tumours and stuff, so they cause them to get cancer. So obviously that's good for, you know, increasing the cancer epidemic which is going. But um, I understand that this video has been quite slow paced. And it's, it's not the most riveting of videos, but it's, I've, I've done about three on a go where I've tried to link these things up or, or split, split them down. It's impossible for me at the minute to split them down. I can't split them down because if I split them down, I won't mention something. And then if I don't mention that thing on that same video, it will be, it, it, the video won't make sense and people won't see how the two things go together. They just won't, they won't see how they go together. People can't understand how communism um, you know, the dumbing down of America, um, communist subversion, Marxist techniques, attacking individuals just to be vindictive, to get movement in a society, attacking institutions in a society to get movement in society, not to necessarily get a positive movement that they might think. And then you've got people like playing bands in the morning um, on a Sunday to drive someone mad or breaking sticks outside their window or telling them they had a really good rave around there last year. All of that, it's, it's just a big jumble mess. Now, I know you probably won't find it very hard to believe in this thing. It's all very strange. But if you look up those different references and you can be bothered, you will see that, that there's a lot to this. And the, these actual change agents and all this stuff, they actually brag about their horrible activities. It is criminal harassment. If people in the government are involved, it is definitely um, malfeasance in public office. 
it definitely is, um, well, it's possibly fraud because, you know, people in the council are actually attacking their own council. And, and you know, it does involve eugenics. And the whole thing is quite, quite, quite a leap. And it's, you know, really, and, 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 and that's not even the whole of it. That's only part of it. And it has, let's not just forget, it has created a situation where you've got the newspapers are silent on it, yet you've got uh, an epidemic of little children hanging themselves, and they're showing them hanging plays and saying it, they're saying it's therapy, and then they're getting the government to say, um, you know, like to send people to the same organisations that um, are recommending the suicide plays. So you're effectively endorsing it with government money. It's absolutely mental. It, it, it is, and as I said, it's difficult for me to say it in a more interesting way. Because if I said it in a more interesting way, I'd get faster. And I would go off on some of the little rabbit holes and go off and explain in more detail. If you go off in too much detail, I could, could be talking for three hours and I could just do it for another three hours. You, you, in the attention span of most people, including myself, it's very, very difficult to get it all in. It's very difficult. Even if I had a whole load of bullet points and a piece of paper, because it keeps linking around and around and around and around, it just does not work. Anyway, I'm sorry about that, but I'd like to hear your comments. Um, I don't know if I'll leave this video up. I might admit, you know, change it with another one. Someone hopefully will do a better one because I don't know if this is that good. I don't think it is actually, but I, I, I don't know if I can do a better effort. I don't know if it's actually possible. It's a very confusing subject. And in this instance, what's been stumbled upon here links a few different things together. You know, they're all there. It links them together. And, you know, it's, it's just very, very confusing, very hard to um, describe. Thanks anyway. Uh, it's been Tom Cardill. It's the 18th of December, 2013. And, um, you can um you can comment if you comment i'd be very grateful thanks very much bye bye